Take an adventure with us Take an adventure with us Life's not a drag, let the cat out the bag No time to worry or fuss Try a new menu or wine We'll always have a good time Whether it's RVs or hiking Kayaks or biking Take an adventure Take an adventure Take an adventure with us Hey everybody, I hope you Hi. can hear us. Yeah, give us a thumbs up if you can hear us, see us. We're did, still new. Did we do everything correctly. The goal is to <laughs> not end our live stream abruptly like we <laughs> like did the last, last time. time. Um, so uh, we got some good evening. That means I hope you can hear us. Welcome Fern the Camper. Welcome our crazy RV. Welcome mom. Welcome mom <laughs> Coleman. <laughs> Uh, I know, um, let's see, our crazy RV said that they are already eating. So I hope you're eating ceviche. Oh, yeah, what are you eating? Yeah. We, we want to know. You're eating. Um, so we're inside the RV tonight because yeah. it looks like we are about to have a major rainstorm outside where we plan to be. Well, the funny thing is the campground's been really quiet all week. And uh, tonight we had uh, neighbors come in. We had dogs. There's we had a wind. bar across the... <laughs> Bay that's got live music. There's yeah. been Navy jets like shooting oh. over all day. Yeah. It's just been really, really loud. Hi, so. Gary. How are you? Welcome, everybody. So, so we're inside. So we're inside. Uh, it's kind of an odd place to be. We're at our table, which doesn't normally live where, live where right it is. Now, <laughs> just trying to set things up so we can see the best. But, um, but uh, we're going to do that because we have a cooking segment. We have a cooking up. segment. And actually, that's where we're going to start because we need to get this fish marinating. So uh, we are making ceviche. And if you don't know what ceviche is, uh, it which is... I didn't until probably a year or so ago. A few years ago, yeah. So, so ceviche is a fish uh, soup cocktail sometimes it's really dish. soupy uh, we got some at the hogfish bar here in key west last night that was very very soupy uh normally it's more of a uh, an appetizer that is not quite so wet but there's <laughs> i oh, have a kitten there's desi uh, keep him away from the fish i am i promise so um it is fish it is raw but it's not technically raw no so we're starting fresh. with raw fish and we're not going to cook the fish however the acid in the fruit juices that we're going to use cooks the fish while it marinates. So it is not a raw seafood dish, although it kind of seems like it would be because we're not technically cooking it. So uh, we got some fish here locally. Whoops, I gotta find the right place. Fantastic. We got some fish here lo locally at Fish Busters. We went over to Fish Busters on Stock Island. It is like 150 yards down the road yeah. from our campground. He said, do you wanna put- Of the um, six, 2630s. So there was the selection that they had this morning. We bought three kinds of seafood. You can really use anything you want in your yeah. ceviche. Um, they were trying to convince us to use cracked conch, which I'm not a big fan of conch in ceviche because I think it's really tough and chewy. So I like it better when it's ground up and it's cooked. Um, but we got three kinds of fish today. We have got some yellowtail snapper, some, wait, no, that's the yellowtail snapper, some red snapper, and some shrimp. And these are Key West pink, pink shrimp. These are uh, the two fish fillets. They're already boned. They're already skinned. They gave them to us that way. And the uh, shrimp, I just cut those up, or I peeled them, of course, and cleaned them. Uh, these Key West, uh, Key West pinks did not need to be deveined or anything. They were just as clean as could be from the start. And they're beautiful. They look just like this. Uh, some people- I think I've had this every day. Uh, I've had, shrimp had shrimp every single every day, day we've been, been here. here. Crazy RV said it sounds Italian. I would agree. So here's the deal on shrimp, and it's my pet peeve as an eater, a diner, and it's also my pet peeve as a cook. Um, if you are serving people shrimp, peel them first. Don't make them play with their the whole, food. 
Peel and eat shrimp. It's a thing. Peel and eat shrimp Coleman is, a, is thing. a thing. But if you're serving me I like, it. like a shrimp Alfredo pasta, uh, get all of the shell off the shrimp. Like I hate it when I get a shrimp that's still got just that little bit of tail on it. it are you are you so American crazy. that you don't want your fish to look like fish? No, I love my fish to look like <laughs> fish. And I love for it to taste like fish. But I don't want to have to play with it while I'm eating it. And if I've got a bowl of Alfredo sauce pasta and I have to peel maybe the tails off, some, it's a mess. Maybe there's maybe it's something sensual that you are just missing out on with playing with your food. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Um, I forgot to grab a spatula. So oh, grab this is going to be interesting. It's why we're in the kitchen, kind of. So I'm going to take this fish. And by the way, this fish, I've already diced up. I just left it in the uh, shape of the filet so you can see what the filets look like. This fish has already been diced up into little like one inch cubes. The shrimp have all been diced up into little one inch cubes. Don't uh, get that one in there. That's the one that's not clean. You right. have to play with that one. Each shrimp has been basically cut into thirds. And then there's the other oh, snapper. So yeah. that's just all going. Right in my bowl, that little shrimp will live later. Now, let me get my other ingredients. Beautiful plates. So what else is, what's everyone having for dinner tonight? That's what I want to know. Where are you? What are you having for dinner? What do you have planned for the weekend? Well, Brian is making a mess here in the RV to make a beautiful dinner for us. Tell us, what what are you having? What are you doing? What's our, is anybody camping this weekend? And you can start talking about that while I finish uh, this. Well, I, you got to show everyone what's on this plate. So this is the rest of the ingredients for the ceviche. Oh, that's beautiful. I've prepared everything <laughs> so that you can see it because uh, the chopping is really the hard part of the ceviche, and it's what takes the most time. All I need right now are uh, three quarters of a cup of lime juice. Now I used key lime juice. Fresh key limes, of course, and I squeeze um, them into my jar. Gary has it right. He wants to know if we're having what we're having for dessert. You know, key lime pie. Um, well, we should Coleman. have key lime pie, but we didn't buy any, so it's probably going to be Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we were downtown at Key West today, and we were wandering around doing all the sightseeing stuff, and we were walking back to the car, and we had walked past. Oh, sorry. Orange. Okay. Orange. We walked past all of these beautiful places that have desserts. We had key lime pie yesterday. I think you've had it twice. I've had key lime pie, pie twice from two once. different places. And I'm so ashamed to admit this, but we walked by a Dairy Queen and we both went, oh, Ooh, Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen. <laughs> it was so We fun. had a two mile walk back to our car. And so when we saw that Dairy Queen, I think we both just got overexcited for, you know, ice cream. So we've already had dessert. So what I've got here is three quarters of a cup of lime juice. And I'm adding to that about a quarter cup of orange juice. These are navel oranges. And it's really just one orange. And did I end up? I ended up just a hair short of a cup. So if I wanted to, I could go pop some orange juice because I have a can of orange juice in the fridge. But I think, I think you're going to okay. be okay. Um, and by the way, that was about a pound and a half of seafood. You could use scallops, you could use any kind of fish you want, tilapia, mahi-mahi, both work well. Um, if you have freshwater fish, they do not work well. You do want to use saltwater fish. Why, um, why don't they work well? The freshwater fish don't, because uh, it's something to do with the chemistry. I don't know, they don't work as well. But you could use scallops, That's shrimp, all I'm gonna get. you could use crab legs, you could use conch, you could use squid or calamari, oh, uh, you good. could use oysters or clams if you wanted to. Any saltwater seafood works really well. Now I'm going to take all of that juice and I'm just going to pour it all right on top of my fish. And then I need one more thing. Our crazy RV. I know I threw a bunch of questions out there. I'm just trying to get my questions in, in between his cooking. She'll get to them. Um, I promise. But they're having meatloaf with potatoes and veggies. That sounds good too. And they're going to shoot a video this weekend at some historical sites, just a couple hours from them. No cool. pie, but now we want pie. I know, right? <laughs> this is agave syrup. Um, agave syrup is delicious. You could use honey if you wanted to. You could use simple syrup if you had to. Is this a paid advertisement? This is not a paid advertisement. <laughs> There's no there. paid advertisements uh, in here. Yeah, we're not that good. And I'm using about <laughs> a tablespoon or so. That's just to counteract the lime juice. Now there's one secret ingredient. Up, down, up, down. This is gonna be funny. Rum. No, tell us about the rum. This well, is not we'll a paid advertisement, but just tell us real we'll quickly. We'll talk more about the rum yeah. later, but this is Papa Pilar's Blonde Rum. It is Solera aged. It is beautiful. It is delicious. You could use any rum. I would use silver. Uh, I would not use a dark rum or a spiced rum for this, but just a little bit. We're just going to give it a little We're only using that because, To well, make this fish very happy. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. Now I'm going to stir that all up together. Why aren't we starting with the cocktails? That's what I want to understand. Well, I can make cocktails anytime you're ready. <laughs> so I'm going to stir all this up together. And I don't think you can really yeah, they can. see it. There we go. Just don't dump it. Oh. All right. So I'm just stirring all that up together. And I'm going to put some wrap on it. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for 20 minutes to cook in the refrigerator. That's crazy. All right. So, Michelle, answer people's questions now. Or answer I, the questions. That's what I got to. Uh, Gary had, and his family had Instapot leftovers. Marianne is working at the library tonight. Oh, that's nice. Um, and so you're just hanging out. I get that. I was, I'm ready for a night to just hang out. We've been very, very busy. So uh, we've been in the Keys for, oh, about a week and a half, maybe. Time flies. Between I don't even. Key West and we, Key Largo. Yeah, Key West and Key Largo. I think you might have drop juice on the floor possibly Maybe i don't know surprise. um <laughs> it's always interesting when brian's cooking <laughs> um, my mom had better not chime in yeah, he, uh, yeah your mom probably has a couple of opinions on that one um but we uh it's, it's been really busy um here with um being in the keys and i'm ready for just some downtime that that was what i was saying um our first stop was in Knoxville, Tennessee at Lewiston Point Campground. And I remember we got the hammock out and I had a day just to be in the hammock and then it got freezing cold. Yeah. And now we've been going nonstop ever since. Atlanta, Georgia, Perry, Georgia, um, Ocala, Hawthorne, Florida area, yeah. Key Largo, now Key West. I'm ready. And then when we and leave here. And we're not going to slow down We're really not slowing down minute. at all. Uh, when we leave here, we're going to Boca. Uh, we have family in Boca, so we're going to be hanging out with them for the weekend. And then going up to um, St. Augustine, Daytona Beach at Tomoka State Park, where we're going to hang out with some fellow Camino Pilgrim friends. We're really excited about that. Um, how have the temperatures been? Hot. Hot. Um, it's been real. Actually, this is sweltering been, to me. Yeah, uh, it's been in the 90s and like low 90s, but the humidity has been through the roof. Yeah. It has rained every day. Um, honestly, say 80. Uh, I think this is 89 right 89 now. 89 right now, and I can see the rain coming across the bay through our window. Yeah. Um, it's been really hot, and honestly, um, we're on this long extended trip, so for us. You know, a couple of rainy days doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. If this was my week in Key West, I would be really bummed out because yesterday yeah. it rained almost the entire day. We only have had one sunset since we've been in Key West. Now we had several good days in Key Largo. I mean, mm -hmm. we can't complain at all. Um, we have we've had some really great weather overall. We had one the one really rainy day, and then overall it's just been overcast, which has probably been good for the temperatures. The only problem is just the humidity and wanting to do so much stuff outside. I feel like I've been sweltering. We went on a water excursion yesterday, day before two, yesterday, two, days, two ago. days ago, and we were snorkeling and they had to pull everybody into the boats and like, we've got to get out of here right now because a huge storm came in while we were on the reef. Yeah. I was planning on, um, I, I was planning on wearing what I had on uh, because I just had on some um, swim shorts. So I was planning on wearing that around town. And so I was fine. And then, I, I was wet by the time we, like I, we had an hour back. So I thought I'll dry in an hour. I was still soaking wet by the time we got back. And I think most people were. Yeah, it was, it was. Gary asked us about wet. the Hemingway house. We ended up not going to the Hemingway house. I am so disappointed. Yeah. It, man, I think it's just, you, you can't squeeze everything in. When we went by it today, uh, we took a little bit of video and there was a huge line. Yeah, there were 10 people, I think, waiting yeah. in line to get in. And we had a lunch reservation that we were really excited about. And so we, we couldn't go at that time anyway, but we were like, okay, we'll come back. And the line just, it didn't give up. And I think it's, I don't know. I don't know what. It, what why it was so busy but yeah. we because um, it was inside and it was humid yeah, and probably threatening rain we wandered around the neighborhood where the truman house is and saw that area which was stunning uh, we did go into um the garden club yeah the key west garden club is like a little hidden secret um 
it is. We uh, think it's a secret. I don't we know. Think it's Everyone a secret, think I don't know. probably knows. Um, it's free for one thing, which is yeah. awesome, and it's just beautiful. I'd say we probably spent a half hour in there, maybe. Yeah. Just kind of wandering around the gardens, and it's really beautiful. It is. It just to see. Well, first of all, they have some of the best views, but it, it was absolutely stunning there. Um, so we have never been to the Hemingway House. We wanted to. How many cats are in the Hemingway House? They have they? sixty polydactyl cats that live on the grounds. Yeah. They and have the, a full time vet. On and staff. the inspiration for our Desi, who. By the way, I guess both cats have decided to take a nap now. <laughs> I figured they'd be in the middle of the live stream the whole time. Um, so, no, we didn't make it there. But we, we went to Hemingway's, the Hemingway Distilling, uh, the Hemingway Distilling Company, which is actually the only thing in Key West that the Hemingway family actually has a stake in. So the Hemingway family is a part owners kind of sign off on the Hemingway, uh, the Papa Pilar rums that we bought. It, it is. It's a cat lover must see. I completely agree. And I'm thoroughly disappointed. Um, and we could possibly run in there tomorrow, but I just don't I see that happening because we've got some high winds coming in with that hurricane that's coming in through the panhandle. Um, we've got, um, I think said like maybe 15 mile an hour winds. So we just need to make sure we go slow and steady um, on on the one and not push it too much. I've always wanted to drive in a hurricane on a seven mile bridge. Okay, it's not a, the hurricane's over on the other side. Could you be dramatic? We'll shoot dramatic video with like really scary, intense music. Um, no, let's not do that. <laughs> but right now, looking outside, I'm really glad that we're not out there. I'm sorry you can't see. It would have been a disaster. It, it would have been a disaster, yeah. absolutely. Um, so what else? What else is everyone else doing this weekend? Um, Gary went camping last weekend in Madison. Nice. Mama <laughs> Coleman, what are you doing? Uh, she retur returned, returned an Amazon package for us today. She did. We had a uh, terrible experience with our Progressive Industries oh, well, surge protector. Don't, don't, don't say what, who it was. This Progressive Industries, our surge protector, went out and they replaced it for free. Okay, you can tell that. So good they were story. fantastic, actually. <laughs> the only challenge was they were a little slow in the response. So uh, because we had a surge protector that did not work, um, we needed one. So we bought one on Amazon. They sent us a new one. And then we basically just swapped them and returned the brand new one that they sent us back to Amazon. Because I know that that's probably not a legit way to do that. But that's what we needed because we needed a surge protector. And, and you just told everyone on YouTube, all, yes, everyone all, on YouTube. all of the people that are watching us, you all know, the YouTube you know, we're, we're monetized now. We <laughs> probably need to act more professional. Yeah. Well, maybe we're going to, yes. we're never going to, all the bars on Duval says Hemingway was there. It's true. And they also all have the best key lime pie and the coldest beer. Yes. And the best seafood or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The, we, the funny thing is where we're camping, we, we apparently have cable. But the only channel that we've got is the um, the Key, West, the Key channel. West channel that advertises everything. So um, I think you stayed up one night watching that channel. <laughs> I was like and, surfing Facebook and I had like the Key West channel and then I was playing a game for a little bit because I wasn't really sleepy yet. And yeah, I learned about all of the bars and restaurants in Key West. And then I had it on earlier today and I was just like, it's funny how mesmerizing it was just to watch the channel. But I would so have our crazy RV. You say you're writing all this down. Are you heading to Key West soon? Because we do have some recommendations. We do have some recommendations. We so one of the things that we're research. It's all research we've been doing all week. <laughs> one of the things we're trying to do is um, have a video out, like a city guide, which is 48 hours in a certain town. And we're not doing it for everywhere uh, that we go, but we did um, create one for Key West, and, and so, we did one for Atlanta a few weeks ago. Yeah. And so, like, it's what all, what could you pack in 48 hours? Now, the ironic, funny thing is we take more than 48 hours to do it. We took four days. four days, but we did more than what, like, so we had two full days on a boat. So we did um, Dry Tortugas one day, and we did The Ultimate Adventure with Fury. It was our third time uh, doing that adventure, and it is, for us, we highly recommend it. Um, it's so much fun. You get out there and you parasail and you uh, banana, boat, banana boat, jet, jet ski. ski. They have like this water playground. Yeah, this playground slides and all that stuff. It looks then, like um, like American Gladiator stuff, but on the ocean. I mean, like not as extreme as American Gladiator. Gladiators, like those are little kids yeah, out there, dude. Um, and then. Um, the last thing we did, oh, oh, and the snorkeling, of course, on the reef, which was amazing. We 
we saw some pretty cool we stuff. Saw we saw barracuda and a bunch of parrotfish and a bunch of yeah. little yellow and black fish. <laughs> Lots. And a lot of the yellow, the the white fish with the yellow stripe on it. Yeah. Tons of and those. And we saw some tangs and yeah. um, no sharks. Um, this Fern time. the camper said bad experience with bo banana boats. Let not me tell you. I'm not a fan either. I felt like I was riding a horse running through water. It was yeah, holding it was like on for West dear Rodeo. life. <laughs> and I'm like, and at one point he was going this way and I was leaning this way. And Brian's like, no, you got to lean in. I was like, oh man, I got to lean in. And then the other thing I'm not a fan of to all of you, I'm not a fan of riding on the back of a jet ski with him. And they make you go in two and they say that you can switch. The problem is, I'm not switching drivers on a on the, the water because I'll be the one that falls in and she then I'll look like the mini whale trying to get up <laughs> out of the water and it, it's a mess. And they say to do it by the counteract your balance. No. Like she goes up this way and I come back that way. No, 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 no. Um Chinese fire drill on the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. Whoa, Nelly is right. Um <laughs> Dry Tortugas was a blast. Dry though. Tortugas. Hey, um, it's been about 10 or 12 oh. minutes on the fish. I need to go stir the fish. So okay. keep talking about dry tortugas. <laughs> keep telling me about dry tortugas. Um, so one thing to note if you're going to dry tortugas is um take like something, something to do like a card game or a dice game because it's a three hour tour. Three hour tour. <laughs> it's a three hour boat ride. And so you want something to do. They have snacks and stuff on the boat, but you definitely want something to do. Bring a book, whatever. We bought a deck of cards from the gift shop or and the, galley. Little cons the galley concession. And uh, hey, RV vacay. Um, so we bought something, for, we bought the cards and had the snacks, but just keep that in mind. And then when you get there, you have, um, like they have like a person giving a little tour of the right. fort. They had, a like just, you could do just the orientation or you can do the entire tour or you could go completely on your own. So there was a 15 minute talk just about the history of the fort and all that. Then if you wanted to, you could extend into a 30 minute guided tour of the fort. We went off on our own because we kind of read about it before. So we went out. Hey, Chuck and Sherry, how are you? Hey, Chuck and Sherry. Um, so we, so after you do that, then they have lunch back on the boat from 11 to one. So at any point you can come <laughs> back on the boat. What? Carrie's <laughs> wife is Marianne. He avoids three hour tours. <laughs> I know. I thought about that. I just didn't want to be the one that said it. Um, so Gary, I'm glad that you said it. Um, but anyway, so then they have the lunch available that you can come and get at your leisure. So we did the fort, we grabbed a lunch an early lunch, and then we went snorkeling. If you're going to the dry tortugas, I would recommend if you're looking at the fort, go to the beach on your right. The right. I think that was the <laughs> north beach. I don't care. It's to the right, dude. That's all we know. The one to the right. Um, but we uh that's the one I would recommend. That's where it was much better snorkeling there. Yeah. The water was calmer at the time that we were there. The and water it, was calmer. It could be the worst experience next time. This was yeah. just our it, the water was also because of all these storms that have been coming through, we've not had great water clarity here at Key West when we've snorkeled. We did at Key Largo though. Uh, Key Largo, the water was beautiful, but down here the water has just been very churned up from all these storms that are coming through. Yeah. So that was what we did one day. Um, and, and oh, after we got done snorkeling, you get back on the boat. Uh, I think what the bar is open at that point and they have some snacks for sale. And that's another three hour tour back. back. Well, a little faster back because the wind was tore back. I know, but I just had to say three hour tour three because hour tour. it made me laugh again. It always makes me laugh. Um, so that was, that was one day. The second day was the Fury. And the nice part about both of these is that you can then wander around Mallory Square at night, get dinner. We had two really great meals. We were back by 5.30 from Dry Tortugas. And then on the day with the Fury, I think we were back yeah, about 4.45, 4.30. Yeah. Um, so as long as you bring clothes to change into or, I mean, it's beach casual. You know, the nice thing about Key West is that um, like flip-flops and a, and a bathing suit are like, Perfectly I mean, really, a good attire for pretty much any place in town. Almost. most really, it doesn't really matter what you're wearing. Heck, to be honest, this, there's one bar where you don't have to wear that much. So anyway, that's did, did not, not what we're going to talk about. Hey, kid wanders. Oh my gosh, this could go <laughs> bad. We have not had any cocktails yet. This nope. is water today. Water so far. Um, but then okay, so so we had the two days on water, 
And then we had to try for all of you, for, for YouTube land, we had to try cocktails. So yesterday, not one, not one top right. cocktail toss, Two. cocktail, co cocktail class. Two cocktail classes. Oh my gosh. Almost back to back. That's our type of attire. Yeah. I knew I loved you guys. So we went Chuck to the Tiki Jerry. House, which was super fun. The Journey Awaits is here too. Hey, Hello. Uh, we went to the Tiki House, which is super fun. They've been around for four or five years and uh, they run a Tiki cocktail class. <laughs> I felt I felt really bad for the guy who was teaching the class though. He was having <laughs> vocal problems. Okay. So a speech teacher and a musician. A voice teacher. Voice teacher. And he starts out with, I'm sorry, I'm a little raspy, but I got it. I just got back from the doctor. And we're like, like that. dude, let's start voice therapy right now. Um, he was, it was stressing us out. And then he decided to tell us, well, you know, I have to go to the speech therapist tomorrow. And Brian's like, um, do you want me to tell you what they're going to tell you? And what was the, what was the news? Seven to 10 days of complete vocal rest for a guy who gives tiki classes in a bar. You know, that's not going to go well for him. He was not happy. I, and then, oh, but you did give him some good tips on how to some good how to spice up his water yeah. by putting bitters in his mm -hmm. water to give it a little flavor because he was he was stressing out. Not he's not allowed to drink any acids, <laughs> any alcohol. So no, well, no alcohol, no, no trying. caffeine, no soda, and no acids. So no lemon juice, lime juice, orange juice. Again, he works in a tiki bar. Um, but anyway, that's off track. So what? So we. We learned how to make four cocktails. We learned how to make at the tiki bar. Uh, the hurricane. I think we have a quick video. You want to oh, show? Uh, no, that's not the hurricane. But we'll get to that. Oh, okay. So we learned how to make. Um, let's see. We made a planter's punch, a mai tai, the original mai tai, which is the drink we're going to do for you tonight, and we and did then the, the royal, royal mai tai. Royal mai tai, which I I think. What did I like better? We both like the royal mai tai just a tiny bit better, okay. but I'm making some twists on the mai tai. The original Mai Tai. Get key so lime gelato. Like Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> and then uh, the last one we learned how to make. Gary which... is telling us exactly where the gelato shop is. The ball on the right. <laughs> okay, well. Past the Walgreens. Of our... You know the sad part is? I can tell you where the Walgreens yeah, is. I know where the Walgreens is. Yeah. Um, I haven't had to go there, but. The but... zombie was the last one. Oh, that's and what it was. They, taught, they didn't teach us how to make a zombie because that is a secret recipe drink for their particular recipe. But they taught us how to light the zombie on fire. And we have then a little clip of that. Then they gave me a torch. So we have a clip of Michelle lighting her zombie on fire. Here it is. Hey. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm my mouth tonight. No, you're not. Yeah. Really? Oh, that's you. Woo! There we go. One more thing. Nice. And the good part is you just After Michelle <laughs> finished lighting her zombie on fire, she had to blow it out. Then she got laid. <laughs> <laughs> then from there we went to uh, Papa. Well, we wandered twice. around a little bit, but then we went over to Papa's uh, Pilar, which is the Hemingway Distilling Company, and did their class and took a little Wait, tour no, of the distillery. No, we didn't do it one right after no, another. The one I mean, class ended on. at three, and the other class didn't start until five. We so we had food. two hours. We, we got had, food. Yeah, we ate. We some wandered. Snacks. We we rehydrated with water. Yes, we did. Um, uh, but yes, the hurricane, it was delish. Oh and my then gosh. We learned how to make um, several cocktails over at Papa's Pilar with rum. And you know what we learned? The best thing to mix with rum? Rum. <laughs> That's what they said. Awesome. They said, you take white rum. You take dark rum and you mix them together and that's and then add an ice cube and that's all you really need. They had a lot of interesting Key West stories he to did. tell. I'm glad that I was for the most part, sober through the whole thing. Yeah. So uh, we got to do the second segment here on the, the fish because it is We got gelato and hurricane conversations going on now, here. Here's the thing. So if you don't believe me that the fish is going to get cooked, we all know what cooked fish looks like, right? It goes from that kind of creamy gray, color like kind of to, well, depending on the fish, but yeah. kind of that creamy color to a more translucent white color. And you can see here in my bowl that the fish is starting to get more white, especially around the edges as it confirm. continues to marinate. It's so there. now it is time to add some veggies just because, um, you know, we got to prevent scurvy. By, I mean, the lime juice helps. We had a we, spinach salad today. I think we, did we I feel like we did a good So thing. it's veggie time. So here are the vegetables that I am adding. So I have got one, 
let's see, let me get up here. Oh, oh gosh. The, the light's rough. So I have one clove of garlic. I have one hothouse tomato. I, um, I cored the tomato and took all the seeds out. Um, I don't like the seeds in this. So I actually cored the tomato and just used the outside flesh. So there's, there might be a few stray seeds, but, uh, and then that also gives us a little more acid. Uh, you can use a jalapeno pepper and depending on your heat preferences, use as much or as little peppers as you want. This is a poblano. I like the flavor of poblano better and I really like it in ceviche. Red onion. And then this, do you want to eat one? I will. It's jicama. If you've never had a jicama really before, um, they look like this at the grocery store except I cut this one in half. This was the smallest one they had. But yeah. this is a jicama. It is a Mexican root vegetable. It's it's really good by it itself. It looks like potato on the inside. It has kind of a flavor of like really, really mild apple. Mm -hmm. And it's crunchy like potato. Very mild like an apple. Kind of sweet, but kind of not. Um, you can peel it, make really thin slices out of it. It's great for like veggie dips or uh, in place of potato chips or whatever. Uh, it's great on like a relish tray. It's really delicious. Um, and it gives some crunch in here. So all of those veggies, including the garlic. Chuck, I want to know if Chuck's taking notes so that um, when you and Chuck start cooking together, it, he knows what your secrets are. Oh, well, I don't really have any secrets. I'm putting them all on I know. YouTube. Um. Gary said you can make a slaw out of it. It is really good in coleslaw or um, really it's great on a salad. Yeah. Um, anything you would use apple in, it works well with. I mean, I guess I wouldn't try making a like a jicama crumble or know. a jicama pie. I just that eat. I don't do. cook. So I'm just going to mix all this up together and we're going to put it back in and let it marinate for about another 10 or 15 minutes. Um, basically, we want this to marinate until the fish looks mostly cooked. Now here's the deal. Um, everybody's maybe had sushi before. So we eat raw fish with sushi. If you're eating tuna, you're going to eat that <laughs> rare. If you're going to, if you're eating tuna, you're going to eat that rare and it's only partially cooked. Uh, a lot of seafoods we do eat not fully cooked through. So don't freak out about that. That's why it's important to buy fresh fish. Um, salt water fish again. Fresh salt water fish. In case you missed that part. So even if I'm at home <laughs> buying this just at my regular own grocery store at home, you know, like in Dayton, Ohio, Kroger, I'm buying frozen seafood that I know has been caught fresh, immediately frozen, so that when I thaw it out, it's ready and it's still Ooh, fresh and it's safe sorry. to eat raw. If it's not safe to eat raw, um, you probably shouldn't eat it at all. Anyway, no matter, no matter how much you're cooking it. Um, so the fact that this might not be 100% cooked through is okay to eat this. So this is now going to go back in the refrigerator. Until, why are there other things? Like, why is there an avocado here still? Um, well, I've got uh, ingredients that we have not talked about yet would be avocado, cilantro, and mint. Because those are the yeah. last things we add. There's in. more to do. So that's the last segment. I um, like to just nibble as we go. Um, do you want to try a bite? No, I want you to put it back uh, in the fridge. Okay, I'm putting it back in the fridge. <laughs> Um, Sherry, we're going to hang out and just open the wine. I don't even make the cocktails. Um, Chuck says definitely buy fish. So where I asked earlier, what's everyone doing this weekend? Um, people who are still here, let's see. Journey awaits. What are you doing th this weekend? Consider the wanders. What are you guys doing? Chuck and Sherry, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing this weekend? What'd you do this week? Just talk to me is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> Don't leave me alone on the screen. Um, oh, uh, Chuck and Cherry are going to Salt Fork. Oh, RV Vacay is going to New York City. What's going on in New York City, please? Uh, are you going to New York City with an RV is what I need to know. That sounds terrifying. I know. Um, One Strange Adventure uh, drove on the I-95. We heard about that. Yeah, because yeah, their One Strange Adventure is like a little bit ahead of us. And so we're kind of watching because they're stopping at some of the same spots. And uh, we do, we love New York City. You've taken students how many times? Uh, a dozen at least. I've taken them once. It was terrifying. <laughs> um, no RV visiting family, RV vacay says. Good, good. Because an RV in, an RV in Chicago, I can handle. An RV mm. in New York City, I can handle that in Chicago. I mean, I'm not driving it down Michigan Avenue, but I have accidentally ridden my bike on Michigan Avenue. Yes, we did that terrifying also. There was a a bike trail right here. Lakeshore Drive. Lakeshore Drive. I said Michigan Avenue. Yeah. Like there's a bike but trail here. We did here. bike on Michigan Avenue. 
there was a railing right here and I was over here during rush We hour. missed the turn to get onto the bike trail and instead we ended up on Lake Shore, actual Lakeshore Drive with traffic. Oh yeah, it's Father's Day this weekend. Happy oh, yeah. early Father's Day. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> um, happy early Father's Day and 80th birthday to Brian's dad. Yeah, my dad. Is, uh, if your mom's still on here. Um, hey, Golden Country Cowgirl. Oh my gosh. Oh, she's looking for a new trailer this weekend. Good, Good luck. luck. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Um, Gary's Father's Day having lunch with his daughter tomorrow and lunch with Marianne's dad on Sunday. That sounds fun. Um, RV vacay said Samson State Park at the mm -hmm. RV. Sounds awesome. Our crazy RV said never been to New York City. <laughs> it's an experience. I mean, I, like I said, I've been with students and Brian wants to take me back <coughs> for Thanksgiving Day Parade. I want to go back to Macy's. I was in the Macy's Parade. Um, with students. Probably about almost 20 years ago. It's changed a little, dear. Yeah, it's always still the same. Oh my gosh. It's New York. Yikes, we live just north of Chicago. Oh, well, I'm from west of Chicago originally. And my first speeding ticket was driving into Chicago. I won't explain, I won't tell you that story because that's embarrassing. Hmm. I won't. I don't even know that um, story. Yes, you do. Doing? Yes, you do. Okay. I've now learned to only do one thing at a time while I'm driving. Oh, that story <laughs> where you were putting on makeup and eating like a Big Mac or something. Um, I wasn't eating a Big Mac. <laughs> I was putting on my makeup though. Um, I was young. We're stupid when we're young. Now? Some of us don't grow out of it. <laughs> oh my gosh. It really wasn't a story. It was just that I was multitasking. I was putting up my makeup. Um, our crazy RV said they grew up in a population of 50. So we'll see if we ever make it to the really big cities. Hey, you know, the one thing you forgot to say when we were talking about Key West is in our Key West video, our 48 hours in Key West video, we are throwing in a scavenger hunt. Oh, we are. We're trying something new this time. So we have a secret we're location. Feeling, we're feeling like, you know, we have a few followers now. So we have a secret location that we Two filmed one something. little segment in. And if you can find that spot in, like if you come to Key West, find that spot, take a picture of yourself in that location and tag us in your picture, we're gonna so send you a t-shirt. So basically what we're saying is you have to come to Key West for yeah. the t-shirt. Yeah. And Mike and Joni are here from those who glamp together. Hey, Mike and Joni. Hi. Um, speaking of new rigs, um, we have um, two people who just got a new rig. Golden Country Cowgirl said she's going looking for a new rig this weekend. And we kind of went, oh, wow, because we know how hard it is. Those who glamped together just got their new rig. And I'm so jealous because En route with Chuck and Sherry have seen it, and we haven't. I've gotten one photo of the outside. Well, like, I nice. thought we were friends. Mm. I'm just saying. thought we were friends. No cocktails for you. No cocktails for you. <laughs> Does anybody get cocktails? Yeah. We're still, I'm waiting. It's already 808. Like this, apparently okay, these getting, things have up. to end an at like, Bam. apparently, okay. apparently it's a thing that live streams end in an well, hour. We don't talk know Talk about why. a couple more things here. So um, our oh. catio video, if you saw the catio video. Yes. Uh, we have our catio sign giveaway. That is coming on Chuck and Sherry have cocktails already. Um, that catio video. Well, it's eight o'clock on a Thursday night. Of course, people should have cocktails and more camping. You know what we've all one thing we've learned. There's that joke about how it's always five o'clock in the campground. We've also learned it's always five o'clock on YouTube. Because <laughs> no matter when you watch the video, somebody's drinking. It seems like. Have you been drinking? I mean, I made a sample cocktail a little earlier. I was taking a nap. Um, I bet your Snooze mom. You I bet your mom has cocktails. I, I know your does. mom well enough to know. Um, our cats want to visit the catio. Well, I, we want you to get your own sign. So watch that catio video and um, and make leave a comment. Just your cat's name. Tell us a story. I don't care. And tomorrow, uh, I don't know exactly what, when, how we're going to do it Probably because we're traveling. Tomorrow afternoon while we're driving. Okay, we're gonna draw for the winner of our catio sign. We also, I gotta tell you, our swag store bulk ordering, first time we're ever trying out swag. That store is closing tomorrow. This is the shirt. Let me see if I can well, give one you one of the shirts. There's several one. different shirts on ah, there. Can I can oh, you see? We can see the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that was Taking a picture. Um, we've that got, I think, seven or eight different products on there, like a plain crew neck t-shirt, a v-neck t-shirt, a hoodie, a zip-up hoodie. There's so a sweatshirt. 
I don't what know what do. is up, but I don't even want to know. Hey, click subscribe for more mildly entertaining content. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah. So swag store, the bulk ordering is um, is going to end tomorrow. We're closing that shop up. And Chuck and Sherry won a shirt from our last live stream. So we'll be mailing that out. Um, your mom is going to a Roaring 20 event on Saturday night. That's exciting. That's fun. I want pictures, please. Text them to us. Those who glam together, thank you. We love the shirts too. They're such a great quality, which is always important to us. Wow. The, uh, all of a sudden, the whole RV just smelled really so, good. That was a bunch of cilantro. I've got maybe a quarter to a half cup of cilantro. Now, this is fresh mint. This is one of those secret ingredients. You won't always see this in a lot of um, a lot of ceviche, but it really brightens up the flavor, helps cut through all that acid. I know. So I'm Say just going to take some, that's Desi. I'm just going to take some of that mint. Um, don't chop up your mint; it makes it turn I bitter. Don't... So here's what I'm going to do with the mint. I heard S yesterday we're supposed to slap our mint. We the slap, cocktail guy made us slap, slap our mint. Your mint. So it does actually work, and I've heard this before. So you take the mint, you put it in the palm of your hand. And you go like that, and then do it like two more times. Don't scare the kid. There we go. And now I'm just gonna tear all the leaves off, and those are gonna get thrown in. Go ahead, go on, continue. I don't know I what don't you're know. saying. I was just saying, this is Desi. Um, RV Vacay, cilantro and mint, interesting combo. It is an interesting combo. Are you daring? Combo. Are you being daring right now? I'm taking an adventure, baby. Desi's watching, wondering what you're doing. Um, Desi, when we walked in with this bag of fish this morning, <laughs> he about um, jumped into he the about bag. About jumped into my lap. Yeah, um, I think you just made made that up with the mint. <laughs> Spank <laughs> was, your mint. He was adamant about it, and no, I have heard that before. All right, Desi, I'd kind of go. forgotten about it. But. Um, so that, does that mean that you've ruined dishes in the past because you have? I mean, I haven't ruined them. They still taste pretty darn good. But. I feel like you might have ruined them. We only have 20 minutes. Um, Fern the Camper, thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. Um, we have not gotten to the cocktail yet, which is really why I showed up tonight. <laughs> so. Cocktail is coming up. Okay. Um, um, Chuck I got... is taking notes on how slow you are, I'm sure. Well, that's okay. Avocado. <laughs> Um, do you know how to peel? Well, not how to peel, but how to dice an avocado can't see very well. without making a mess. So I'm going to take the avocado. I'm running the knife around it. Now twisting it in half. Ooh, that take is so beautiful. The, piece, the seed pod here. And I'm going to take oh my, my knife and just go and turn it and it comes off. I feel like you're showing off right now. Now with my knife, I'm just going to. Oh gosh. Let me get out of the way. Slice. The inside of the avocado, like so, and I'm gonna slice this way. Oh, you know what I haven't done? And now I have diced avocado. I just need a spoon to scoop it all out. But you don't want to do this to your avocado before it's time to use it because um, it, will, it get brown. will turn brown and disgusting and gross. Knife skills is right, RV VK, and I still get out of the way though. So I'm just doing that. I'm just slicing very gently. Lift your hands up higher. Just slicing very gently I want to see how talented that. you are. Wow. So that um, I'm not cutting through the skin. Now, depending on how ripe the avocado right, is. It's definitely showing I up. might be able to do this. But look, you can do it like this. Oh. And it just, oh. And it just <laughs> it fell right on out. the cutting board. If it's not ripe, you have to use a spoon to scoop it all out. Um, but then, wow, yeah. that is a perfect avocado. Yeah, we saw a guy selling avocados on the side of the road today, and some limes. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're gonna make ceviche, you might as well do it down here in Key West. Fresh ingredients are crucial. Absolutely. So, what's next? Um, well, that's that's all of that's gonna go in right at the very end before we serve it up. But I guess that means it's cocktail time. It's cocktail time. Cocktail we time. Minutes. We need cocktail theme music. <sighs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Be careful with the avocados and the big knife. You can put them in the fridge to slow down the ripening. There's a cat behind me oh, doing something. There's a cat doing something naughty. All okay, right. I'm going to move all this out of the way. Let me grab the, gather ingredients. So um, I, I still didn't hear um, what RV, uh, what RV she was going to get. And I just realized I haven't um, put any notes on the, on the screen. So things like that. Here we go. Oh, this. Go. And Rob with Chuck and Sherry just said, yes, it's cocktail time. 
Cocktail time. He's working hard. He's working hard. He is putting ice in a glass, apparently. So in our RV, um, we travel with a cocktail shaker and a measure. How many of you do that? That's what I want to know. We have an RV that is less than 30 feet, but we have all the stuff. Gary said he just poured one. If you're going to tell us you just poured a cocktail, you need to be more specific. I am jealous and want to know what it is. I am carrying five different kinds of bitters with us. In he the RV. now has a, a liquor, liquor cabinet. cabinet we in made the room. RV that he has now expanded beyond said liquor cabinet. Okay. And Sherry said they do. They travel My with all time. stuff. Oh, yeah. And I learned yesterday how to actually use this. I was pretty impressed with myself. Mai Tai. Okay. Everybody's Sorry, probably quick. had one, right? Um, they're delicious. You get them at all the tiki bars. We learned a lot about them because um, most people don't make them right, we learned. Um, and there's a lot of ingredients, and it's not the easiest thing in the world to make. Um, okay. Just because there's a lot of ingredients, and a lot I'm of them are to aim weird. Down a little bit. So if you read the list of cocktail ingredients and you went, what the heck is that stuff? It's okay. We, we can, couldn't even find all the stuff yeah, that Brian I put on the list. Like here in Key West, like where like fruity drink capital of the world, right? Yeah. Probably just about other than like Hawaii, um, couldn't find several ingredients. So we've got some substitutions. They were up there in the chat. So if they missed this Pilar, wine, uh, Pilar, Pilar rum. Delicious rum. That was one of the cocktail classes we did yesterday. It is so good. Um, it's called Seven. Who smell? It's because they say that there are seven main flavors in the taste profile of the blonde rum. Someone might consider that a problem. Oh, well, no. A liquor cabinet isn't about having too much liquor. It's about having liquor options. It's about having lots of options so that we can make what's appropriate. And honestly, if you camp with us, <laughs> just saying, we um, love to share. Here's the thing. Ask Mike and Joni. You're going to notice a lot of the ingredients in this cocktail are the same as the ingredients in the ceviche, minus the fish. Um, because food should pair with the drinks that you're having with the food. So there's going to be some similarities in the recipe uh, because that actually makes the, the drink pair really well with the food. So I'm going to start off with two ounces of silver <laughs> rum. Oops. There's rum flying everywhere. Two ounces of silver rum. Now, overproof rum was the next ingredient. That'd be like 151, something like super high octane. The reason for that is just to give it a little more alcohol kick. Um, I... I don't need that. Don't um, need it, and we couldn't find it. And well, I didn't want to buy a whole giant bottle of 151. So I'm just gonna add like an extra half ounce of rum because I didn't put that half ounce of 151 in there. Mike and Johnny said that you guys make good drinks. <laughs> okay. And by you guys, you mean Brian. And um, those who glance together, I have to tell you, um, I don't know if you heard, but we went to Dairy Queen today and we thought of you. We were yeah. in Key West of all the options that we could have. We went to Dairy Queen. Contro. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Contro is an orange flavored <clears throat> liqueur. And we're going to use, uh, I'm making sure I keep an eye on my recipe here. We're going to use. Good thing you don't have anything baking in the oven. About a half <laughs> of an ounce of that. Um, I got in trouble when I bought the Contro today because Michelle told me to buy a small bottle. I did. Because he has a small liquor cabinet. And they had a bottle that was smaller than this that was $25. And this bottle was $29. Which bottle should I have come home with, everyone? The small one, because it fits in the RV better. Next up should be... Just because I buy the big box of cookies doesn't mean you get to buy the big box of liquor. The next ingredient should be orgeau. Go big or go home. There yep. we go. Orgeau. <laughs> Or or got or or gate, depending on how you want to pronounce it, depending on where you what are. It's it? actually orjo. Orjo is a syrup mm. made from almonds and orange water. We smell it. This is an mm. orjo. Oh. We couldn't oh, get it. You orgeau. couldn't find it. That's right. You can make it yourself. Basically, you take ground almonds, you blanch them in simple syrup, strain it all out, add a little bit of orange uh, water, mm. orange uh, essential oil would work too. Um, Ooh, that would be good. You could use uh, orange like coffee or I'm uh, not orange but an almond coffee creamer if you wanted to in place of the orange if you couldn't find that I'm just going to use amaretto because I didn't put in the 151 so I could use a little extra alcohol in here a half ounce <laughs> I love uh, how you justify things a half ounce and maybe a tiny bit more amaretto or would have in it um orange so I'm going to use just a Until splash you, of orange bitters. Do you think the guy who taught the cocktail 
cocktail class yesterday would be disappointed in our ingredients? No, because he actually said that if the Mai Tai is too tart for you, to sweeten it up by adding a little bit of amaranth. Yeah, now, go. when people use bitters, most people yeah. are like, bitters, I'll use a dash of bitters. Ugh, like that. No. He dash, showed us. Dash of bitters. You want a good, solid dash of bitters. Here's what I need to know, Chuck. How are your cocktail skills? That's what I need to know. Next up, I need one ounce of lime juice. I am using key lime juice Why because not? what else would I use here in Key West other than I think that key you need to make juice. sure you save some to make key lime pie. We can have, can, we can have key lime pie hey, outside. I know uh, that in Ohio, I can buy this exact same brand at Kroger. <laughs> um, I need one half ounce, no, one full ounce of lime juice. Our live stream ends in 10 minutes. Don't worry, I got time. One full ounce of lime juice. Now this is gonna be a tart drink. Um, even though I did not mm. use, uh, especially because I didn't use the Orgeau, which is a little sweet. The agave so, helps though, right? So that's why I'm gonna add agave. So agave that was in the other, lime juice that was in the other. For the agave, I'm gonna use about a quarter of an ounce. If you like your drinks sweeter, use a little bit more. If you like your drinks tarter, don't use any at all. I don't like it sweet, um, I like it a little sweeter. So I'm just gonna use hi, baby. Eh, about have that much kind of um, agave. Now, Say hi to your that's the classic Mai Tai right there. I love tiki flavor. So I have tiki bitters. This bitter cube, bought this on Amazon. I mean, it's uh, message us, we'll give you a link if you want it. Um, or just look it up. This is Jamaican number one. It, it smells is basically, so good. It's ginger and anise and cinnamon and clove and nutmeg and all it kinds of yummy things. And I'm putting a dropper of it in. This is not part of the traditional. Chuck makes a mean whiskey sour. Love me a whiskey sour. I think I see a cocktail off. Now, is that a thing? this. Is that a thing? A cocktail, cocktail off? off? You know, like a cook off? Yeah, but my mind is going to places that I probably shouldn't say on YouTube. Please don't. Um, this is full That'll of ice. Inappropriate. Your mom is on here. Full of ice. Now, we got to shake, shake, shake. Are you ready? How long do we shake, Michelle? <laughs> Until you get away. <laughs> you shake until your hand gets cold. Oh, that's right. I forgot that one. We are down with the time. See? She called it that. Yeah. There we go. All uh, the cats are awake. I know. The neighbors are going to know what's going on. Um, the hardest part about this is getting this to come back off. I'm sorry if that was loud and you had to mute. I apologize. Spin. This is the loud part. Uh-oh. Nope, oh, works. he got it. Let's lift the glass up so people can see. Oh, now we come with fancy plastic wear. Oh, I forgot. Need the next thing here. This uh -oh. is the next uh -oh. little trick. Uh -oh. Another flavor that is a little bit unusual, but is traditional in here. I am taking two mint leaves. Two mint leaves. Give them, give them a little spank. God. Now here's the trick. <clears throat> Take those mint leaves and rub them around the inside of the glass. Smell the glass. You smell the mint? Keep rubbing. <laughs> wow. I'm just kidding. I had to say it. It was right there at the tip of my tongue. And I'm I had just going to drop them right in there. But it was interesting because he uh, we've only heard to do it on the, on the rim. And I like how he said to um, put it on the inside of the glass. Normally yeah. I would strain this and have fresh ice in here. But yeah, I live in an RV and ice is hard to come by. Um, now I'm gonna take one last little sprig of mint and throw it in there. I need my cherry. Oh my. Wait a minute. Oh my. He's off trying to find something. Good thing we live in just a really small RV because it doesn't take long for him to gather ingredients. What? Hey, bring the ceviche while you're at it, no? Not quite Not yet. yet. Um, so we love Old Smoky Moonshine. So yeah, you can put a maraschino cherry in your beverage if you want, but we're not playing around here, folks. Let me hide that so you have more room. There you go. Old Smoky Moonshine cherries, not baby. Not a paid advertisement. Again, we are <laughs> RVVK. I'm so sorry. Mama Coleman, I'm really sorry. That was probably. Okay, I just need a spoon now. I can't get it out. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> 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 oh, you're so terrible. Um, by the way, people. it is. I've only had one. 
Um, by the way, it's really dark out, so I'm glad that we stayed inside. Moonshine Cherry should, of course, be on a tiny little umbrella, but there it is, Michelle. Do okay. the honors. Um, the one at the restaurant, they put an orchid in. They did. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It smelled really good, too. How did I do? Oh, that's really good. Is it too tart? It's a little tart. First world problems. You are so right about that. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, that's perfect. So there you go. It does. It there looks it really great in just our plastic wear. Tell us about the ceviche, Brian. You have five minutes. Ceviche, I have five minutes. Oh, my gosh. Ah! Now I can say I've had a cocktail. So good. Oh, the ceviche is completely white now. Here we go. Jesse's coming to help. Oh, that is Looks very delicious. White. Beautiful. Okay. You have to stay away from now, food. Now, I need to, on the top, you notice I haven't put any salt and pepper in yet? Some fresh salt. Give it a couple of good grinds here. <laughs> Jesse's watching. It's a pound and a half of seafood. So before you're like, why are you putting all that salt in there? It's a lot of seafood. Can I mix? Can I do anything? Just give it a second. Oh, it does. It Black it, pepper. Give it some cracks of black pepper. It's delish. It's all... How many of you, when you go camping, cook like this? That's what I want to know. I know Chuck does. Chuck will. Those, uh, Chuck tears it up. Chuck does Those beans and weenies, Chuck, man. I don't think there were beans and weenies. What were they? Beans what was with the beans, Chuck and Sherry? Just going to take that avocado. Let me Key West. I can't remember anything that's happened. It's quiet. It is quiet. It got very quiet in here. I need tiki music. Oh, that would be good. Ambiance. We need some ambiance. Should have gone over to Epidemic Sound and found some tiki music. Ooh. Love to cook. I'm so glad. I'm glad we have friends. Pork and beans. Pork it was and pork and beans. Okay. Thank you. We need, we need apparently we need help. Um now I'm gonna throw in all of that lift. cilantro and mint. This is a bowl for two, you know that, right? Well, the recipe serves three to four very hungry people. Um as I, an entree. I wonder if we have any neighbors here. Uh Fiona that um, works here, we could call her. Uh, Gary said he's the cook, I'm the fearless chef, lousy bartender. <laughs> Aim that camera down a little bit. Oh, sorry, all right, I gotta, I'm slacking on my job, people. It she, looks tasty, it smells delicious. If you think about it, it's basically pico de gallo and guacamole with fish added. <laughs> now the next thing you need is some crusty bread. Crusty bread, crackers. Now here's the tricks with this. Um, I love to serve this on a plate in a cup of butter lettuce, but we forgot to buy butter lettuce. Um, so put some lettuce on a plate. He likes to make it look pretty while we're in the air. And then spoon that in and put a spoon of it into your plate and then serve it with some crusty rolls. But it's also really delicious with um, crackers, like rich crackers, wheat thins, or your favorite gluten-free. I have to have it in my gluten There we go. That's the how it looks when oh it's gosh. done. Um, now, and a cocktail. Like I said, this recipe would serve like three, maybe four people as an entree. Um, this is also great as an appetizer. Oh, nan though. bread. Nan bread. Oh, nan that. bread would be good. Um, it's also really good as an appetizer. So if you wanted to make yes. this your first course, in which case this would probably serve eight to 10 people. Who's coming over? That's what I want to know because it's a lot of food here. Um, I need to rate the fridge now. It yes. works in great. the refrigerator uh, overnight. Like you could eat it tomorrow, leftovers for lunch or even dinner. Ooh, well, um, gonna it be... will not freeze, will not freeze well. And if you're going to save it overnight, you should absolutely drain all of the juice out of it and put that in a separate bowl. So you have all the seafood and the veggies in one bowl, drain all the juices into another bowl, okay. like a mason jar or something. Does it have mango? Uh, no, but you could add mango. Yeah, we saw we had some mango. Oranges, orange um, slices orange. are really good in it too. What about the pit from the avocado? Do you put that in there like you do for no, guacamole? There's okay. enough lime juice that the avocado is not going to turn now overnight. Okay. Um, but you definitely, what will happen if you juice leave all the lime out. juice in there overnight is that any seafood that it's touching is going to turn very rubber. It's going to overcook. And it's going to get very uh, rubbery and just the texture is going to be off. Hey, we're hanging out with family tomorrow. So I think we just, I think we're going to make, we bought wine for them, but I think this is going to make them even happier. 
Um, so we hope that you enjoyed tonight. A couple of things. We um, eat up, Brian. You got the cocktail. Um, I'm getting the ceviche. Yeah, we uh, have the catio sign and we have the shirts. We're really excited to give away the shirts. How is it? It is delicious. Yeah. It's perfectly cooked. Um, good. So we hope you all enjoyed. We were hoping to have the water behind us, but the weather decided not to cooperate and the neighbors decided not to cooperate. But we thank you guys so much for being here. It means the world to us to have people here. We didn't know how this was going to go. We thought we might be just talking to ourselves. Which we do all the time. So yeah, I mean, we pretty much like our own company, so that's good at least. Uh, but thank you, thank you so much. We hope you had fun. Um, we are going to do this again in some time. We haven't made I don't a know. decision for where the next one's going to be. I don't know where we're it's going to be. At least two weeks. Yeah, we need we need, we need, a, week we need a pause because we have a lot of things going on. So thank you so I much got video for coming. To do. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for coming. We need Cheers. to catch up on a lot of other videos. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for Bye -bye. coming. Bye-bye.